Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about approval process and its implementation, which is part of uh, document management and it's quite a common requirement. And I'm sure all of us have had to deal with it one way or another. Um, today we can use SharePoint Online and Power Automate, which is part of uh, Microsoft Power Platform, to get the process running. It can be run continuously or instantly and help us to achieve what we want. SharePoint Online is the best document management platform for various reasons and uh, with addition of Power Automate, I think it's a killer app for document management. In this particular scenario, we have to get the office document, send it for approval to the specified people, wait for approval responses and then decide whether it's approved or rejected. Then we publish a PDF copy of the working document into a published document library so uh, readers or viewers won't be able to edit the document text and uh, we publish this PDF version as the next version in the of the published document. So for example if there is already an existing document with the same name as version 1 the new copy or uh, the new PDF copy will be added as version 2. So um, for the purpose of uh, document management functionality, um, I created a document management library and um, there is a couple of documents that can be here or not a couple, as many as you want. And um, when document is ready, we are going to start a process from Power Automate. Um, it will be called document management approve in this case. Specify the approver and run the flow. That's how it's going to work. Okay, how our flow looks like. So our trigger for the flow will be for a selected file and um, we specify the um, approvers as part of the email. Then we get the selected file properties. We will use it later in order to get the relevant files for conversion etc. Then we've got the um, different variables that we need to initialize with certain values as we go. So our first step, or actually two steps, we, which we will run in parallel, is starting and wait for approval. And then we start a parallel process, which will check every couple of weeks that the document is approved. If it's not approved, then we send an email reminder to the person who specified as an approver. So this is pretty straightforward. We create um, an action for approval, specify um, what file needs to be approved and assign it to approver email. Then after all this complete, so we waited for this, this is finished, we set an approval complete variable which we will use later. We need to get the approver comments and um, in this particular case, we need to make sure that the approvers actually approved the document and it's not rejected. So that's why we check here that the approval responses in the dynamic content here, that is, if it's equal to reject, then we set the document approved to false. So the flow here so far is actually we initialized a few things, we started an approval and then we're checking whether it's approved or not. Let's say it was not approved, so somebody rejected the document. In that case we send an email to the person who submitted the document 
But if it was approved, what we need to do is to basically provide back into the document metadata who the approvers were, so people know who approved the document. And for that particular reason, what we need to do is we need to construct a, um, a new string. First, we pass, so we get the value of the approval of the, of the reviewer's emails. And we need to construct this particular string. What it's going to do is then, we then need to make this JSON looking string to then pass further and add this to the array of uh, approvers. So for each approver, we construct that array because it will be utilized later in the process. And then we create an array of those elements So what we are doing next is that we need to get some of the properties of the document that we will then update in the published PDF. We can only do this by using the... So again, there is another problem here that we are trying to solve. So we need to update the document metadata without increasing the version number. Because if we update it using the original Power Automate action, which is called update item, then our version will be increased. That's not way we what we want to do. So f uh, to achieve that, we are calling the uh, SharePoint REST uh, API. And for the selected item, which is our current document, we call validate update list item function. And we are passing some JSON data. So uh, remember on that step before we initialize the array of approvers, we are passing this in this particular format. And then we're passing the flag B new document update to true, which means that it's kind of a new document. So we don't need to increase the version number. So, in this case, we are updating the original document with the approvers. And what we are doing next, we create a file in, the, in OneDrive. We are using OneDrive to do the PDF conversion in this case. So, we're using actions from uh, OneDrive. We create a file with the original content convert the file to PDF, and then what we need to do is we either creating a file or updating the file. Because originally, the create file action in um, Power Automate, it will fail if the file already exists. <coughs> and for us, it's important that we we check this if uh, we check this condition and if the file exists then we update so we our workflow or the power automate flow will not fail but then proceed to the next activity that's why in here oh sorry in here so we create two scopes. One is for file creation, another is for file update. Also, there is one requirement that we s that we make Excel files intact. So we don't create PDF versions of the files, but only or, or just pass Excel files as is. So in this case, it's quite simple, but it can be more sophisticated. And in that case, we are checking. So if if it's if it's um, not an Excel file, so we do one set of steps. In if it's an Excel file, we do other set of steps. But just um, a quick note here is that when create uh, file scope fails, 
we run update file. So in here we need to specify configure run after. And here we specify has failed. So for example, if create file scope failed, that's where we run that activity. And in this one, configure run after will be if update file scope is successful or is skipped because either file is created or updated, we still need to run that following activity. And this activity is actually updating the metadata values of the target PDF file in our case. So that's how it looks like. And this very simple yet powerful implementation will help us very much along the uh, al along the way with our document management and approval process in our organization. So while we were discussing that, I've got a notification from my flow that I started here for the IT request document. I approved it and then the flow actually created the PDF version of that file, calculated the relevant metadata values and now it's ready for consumption by readers or viewers of this document. That's all that I wanted to show for today. Um, stay tuned for more interesting videos on the Bobos Big Block channel. Goodbye.